Hallelujah. How are we, Israel? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hasn't Yahweh been tough? His mercies, they endureth forever, Israel. Hallelujah. We do Barak, y'all. Those of you listening by V of live stream, we do say our greetings to you, Israel. Those of you here at Teshu Community, I will Barak you all. Hallelujah. As I was speaking about last cut on Scripture Truth, concerning hearing the voice of Almighty Yahweh. There are steps that we must take, Yisrael, that we may shema, hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh. And those steps are precise. Torah commands us and instructs us what we must do. And one of the things I want us to understand, Yisrael, as we get into the message, is the water or the mayim. One thing that water is very, it's, t- it's good to it doing many things, Israel. Right, Without water, we would not have life. Without water, the plants could not grow. Without water, we would not be able to uh, quench the thirst of our bodies. Water is very important. And one of the main things we see in these last and evil days it's the corruption of the pure water sources, Israel. Yeah. Today we must have we have to have filters in certain parts of this United States of America. Yeah. Why? To protect you against certain agents. Yeah. Sure, there are minerals and things in the water that affect the taste. Yeah. So is it with Israel? Yeah. There are things that affect our taste unto Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. There are things that we allow into the well. That corrupts the water, Israel. But before we get into that, because that's one of the main topics I'm going to speak about tonight. Because Yahweh, even in the beginning of all things, of the Olam, he moved. His Ruach, it moved. With, among, amongst the waters, Israel. And we in this nation, in this world, are a very troubled people. We're troubled. What happens when you trouble the waters? When you trouble water, it moves. It shakes. It splashes to and fro. It doesn't know which way to go. It has no certain direction. It just disperts everywhere. And we have been dispersed. We have been separated, Israel. Why? Because of our own sins. And because we have not hearkened, we have not heard, we have not listened unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. That we understood this in a very personal way. He even described the waters, his situations, as being troubled waters. He even described his enemies as coming in unto him as the power of the rushing of many waters, Israel. So what is it going to take that the waters be subdued, controlled? It's going to take us listening to the, the voice of Almighty Yahweh. That's the only way that the waters are going to be controlled. That's the only way that the troubled waters are going to be settled. Did not Yahshua walk upon the waters and Kephah? The waters were troubled. It was boisterous. The disciplined ones, the disciples of Yahweh, were afraid that the boat would capsize and that they would drown. But what happened? Yahshua, the tall of Almighty Yahweh, he came treading, walking upon the waters. He told those that was in the ship, don't be afraid. I am in control. Was he not in control of the situation, Israel? That even Kephah, he called upon Kephah to come on, come on to the waters. And the Amuna, the little that he had, he was able to walk on the water. But yet, he began to sink, Israel. Are we sinking in the waters of this nation? The governments of this world? Do we find ourselves afraid? Unable to hold on to the amuna of Yahweh. We don't fear Yisrael. Hallelujah. Why? Because Yahweh, he's in control of the waters. Hallelujah. He has has allowed his Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach, to speak and to move Yisrael. Hallelujah. Even unto this troubled nation, this nation of Yisrael, we have become bitter as I get into this message. One example, the waters of Mara, where Moshe took Yisrael, out of Mizraim into the wilderness. They thirsted. They desired of a place to drink. 
yet the waters were tainted. There was bitter. There were things in the water that uh, was not edificent or were not right for the body. So they could not drink or they'll be poisoned. Yes, yes. So Moshe, he saw Almighty Yahweh what to do. Sure. Hallelujah. I will get onto that. Let me not get ahead of myself, Israel. Y'all. I want to make it make this message exciting for us that we listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we catch the key, the, the, the key points in this. That Yahweh, he is in control of all things. So I want to begin in Tehillim chapter 29, verse 1. Satan is doing all he can, Israel, y'all, to pollute us, to pollute the living waters of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. These are, these are the first steps that we must do, Israel, y'all. In Tehillim, Psalms chapter 29 and verse 1. First of all, we must, Yahab, we must give. The nations are parents. The situation, what we have learned, Israel, Yah, we truly don't know how to Yahab, how to give. We don't know how to give unto our neighbors. We don't know how, when we see the one in need to provide, even of our little, it is great unto one that is needed, Israel, Yah. We don't know how to bring an offering before the buyer of Almighty Yahweh, how to give unto the works of Almighty Yahweh, whether it's by supporting by monies, by your hands. Whatever you have to give. We don't know how to give this right, y'all. We don't know how to, yaha, to give. So if we can't give unto each other tough things, and we can't support the works of Almighty Yahweh, how are we going to give unto Almighty Yah? What do we give unto Almighty Yahweh? How do we give unto Almighty Yahweh? Do we give grudgingly, not wanting to share our portion? Yahweh, he owns a cattle upon a thousand hills, Israel. How many is that? He is the creator and the maker of all things. What can we possibly give? Can we build a house big enough? Can we give an offering large enough? How does it get there? How does he receive it? Can we mail it to him? Well, that's foolish, Zakan Yerami. I know it's not. See, one thing about our minds, Israel, y'all, it has to be perk. It has to be given a push that we think and that we understand what Yahweh is doing. You can't, it can't get to him by mail or by email. How does it get to him? How does he receive it, Yisrael? Hallelujah. I will get into that. But first of all, we must know how to Yahweh. We must know how to give. Give unto Yahweh honor, praises that's due to his name. I know that I fall short in that department, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Because Yahweh has truly been tough unto me. Hallelujah. So what can I offer unto Yahweh? What can I give? What can you give that will satisfy his heart? It's more simple than what we imagine, what we think. All he desires of us to is to obey, to shema, to hear. When he speaks, he wants us to move Israel. You ever been around, or I've done this as a child, a cup of water? You can thump the cup, tap on the table. It don't take much for the little ripples to come into the water. You can blow into it, the water responds. You can speak to it, and it even responds. It doesn't take much to move the waters. Then why does it take so much for us to move for Almighty Yahweh? Have we become dry, Israel? Is that wellspring of life? Is it gushing up from our lips in an abundance? And a flow of living water. Don't you know living water moves, Israel? Only stagnant water does not move. It's full of death. There's a stench in stagnant water, water that does not move. Every abominable and pugnant thing lies in stagnant water, water that is dead, water that does not move. So we must know how to give, Yahab, to give. What is to give? To provide, to ascribe, to proclaim, Israel. Even to set in place. Hallelujah. Do we take time to set the necessary things in place for the day of Yah, the Yom of Yah, His Shabbat? Do we take the time, Yisrael, Yah, or do we grant unto Yahweh? What is to grant? It is simply to give. To give all, all that we have. Not holding anything back. Hallelujah. 
or to permit. We must give. We must allow Yahweh. That's a way of giving, to allow. To allow Yahweh, allow the Torah of Yahweh to have its beautiful work in your lap. Allow the rebuke and the reproof to straighten us up, Yisrael, to cleanse us, to purge us, to burn out the dross. Don't you want to be pure gold? I desire to be as gold tried in the fire yet seven times, Yisrael. Pure water before Almighty Yahweh. So we must give unto Yahweh. O oh, you mighty, the Gabar, mighty, the strong thing. The mighty. Don't you know Yisrael is mighty through Almighty Yahweh? Through his Torah, if we walk in the might of Almighty Yahweh. Oh, you mighty, we must Yahab or give unto Yahweh splendor. What is that? What is splendor? What can we give unto Yahweh? What riches can we give unto Yahweh? Hallelujah. Especially just the beauty, Yisrael, of being set apart. Being Kodesh, being separated from the world, that we as a people could give all unto Almighty Yahweh. See, the ways of the world seek to bind a man. That's the way this system is set up, Yisrael. It's not set for you to have freedoms. Freedom of speech, you don't have freedoms of speech. Do what you want to do, you can't do what you want to do. Even if it's tough, you can't do. It may they make it hard to do that, Yisrael. So we must give unto Yahweh, give unto Yahweh splendor yes, yes, yes. and honor, reverence unto Yahweh. Yes. That reverence is basically just giving him your life, the governance over your life. Have we not said or testified that Yahweh he is the head, Yahshua, yes. of my life? We do nothing without the head, Yahshua HaMashiach, leading and guiding us, Yisrael. Verse 2, Yahab, give to Yahweh the honor that is due unto his name. So we must learn how to give, Yisrael. The honor that is due unto Almighty Yahweh. The honor that is due unto his name. And we cannot do that, Yisrael. We're not going to Shema. We're not going to hear the voice of Yahweh. We're not going to be able to enter into the place. That we should be Yisrael, under the wings of Yahshua HaMashiach. If we do not learn how to give unto Mighty Yahweh, give him our attention. There's this old statement that says, I will not give a person the time of day. We do not give Yahshua Yahweh the time of day, Yisrael. And it's a shame. And I speak unto the house of Yisrael. Yeah. We give radios time. What's on the internet, we give that time. Yeah. Those of you with TVs, you give the TV time. You give... Your employer time at your job, but no time for Almighty Yahweh. He requires us to Yahab to give Yisrael. Then once we give unto Almighty Yahweh, we'll be able to hear. Once we give our ears unto Almighty Yahweh, our mind, our left, our heart, we'll be able to hear Yisrael. And then he shall speak. He will speak unto us. And we will listen and we will hear. Give unto Yahweh, verse 2, the honor due to his name. And he says to worship, to extol, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Worship Yahweh and the beauty of Kodesh. Being set apart, Yisrael. You should want to be set apart. Set apart, different. We had a conversation with Aap, and he was talking about how he was, when he was in the world, even though he tried to do what others do and mix in with his friends, it was always that was something different. In the back of his mind, something different. I experienced that in school. Even though wanting to fit into your peers, yet there was something different. There was things that I could not do, Yisrael. Things that I did not want to do. Hallelujah. So we must be Kodesh set apart for the service of Almighty Yahweh. And getting into verse 3. Now, are you ready to hear Yisrael? Yeah, yeah. Are we ready to hear the thundering of Yahweh's voice? Yeah. Lift your hands if you're ready for the thundering of Yahweh's voice. Yeah. Lift up your voice if you're ready to hear Yisrael. Yeah. To Shema. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 3 in Tehillim. 
And I'm not going to finish all this tonight, Israel. I just want to give us just a portion of this. There are seven voices of Yahweh that he expressed himself unto Israel. And I'm going to specifically tonight just deal with one, one aspect. And I might even not get through with that. Hallelujah. Verse 3 of Tehillim 29. It says, the voice of Yahweh is upon. Let us stop right there. Upon. It is over. All things, Israel. There is no power in the Shemayams or in the Olam that is above the power of the voice or the call of Almighty Yahweh. And that is his completeness, Yisrael. Yeah. It's more than just those who say, oh, I heard Yahweh speak unto me words verbatim. His presence is around us everywhere you go. He speaks. Whether it's in the trees, he speaks. In darkness, he speaks. In light, he speaks. Why? Because it is the essence. It's the totality. It's the totalness. It's the completeness. It's what holds all things together, Yisrael. It's what even has kept you through the years. Hallelujah. He has kept you in his hand, in his mind, in his heart, Israel. The voice of Almighty Yahweh. The voice Yahweh he is upon. What is upon, Israel? You think, you think about that. If we were to look upon, it's throughout Torah many hundreds of times. But yet it's a word that we take so for granted. Ah, that's the Hebrew term for upon. Ah. Upon, to rest, to be established, to be set, to be near. Don't we, uh, don't we desire Yahweh to be near unto us? Was not when Yahshua was baptized by Yachanan, did not a dove ascend from the Shemayams and rest upon Yahshua HaMashiach? Showing the selection of Almighty Yahweh, the approval of Almighty Yahweh, the Ruach of Yahweh. What do we have resting upon us, Israel? Is it the rock of Almighty Yahweh? Or is it the spirit or the rule of the flesh? Is it our attitude? Maybe we didn't like something. We let that to rest upon our shoulders. We have a chip on our shoulders. I've heard the term, we have the weight. The weight of the world is upon me. Hallelujah. Did not Yahshua, as I spoke about in the beginning, walk upon the waters. Just right over the waters. His feet didn't get wet. His clothing was not wet. But yet, he moved, he walked upon the waters. Upon. The most precious things that you possess, that you want to preserve, you're not rough with those things, are you? You don't throw those things down. But you set them what? You want to keep it for your children? You set them upon a high place. Do you not? In a safe place. Hallelujah. Yahweh knows what he's doing, Yisrael. He's even set his Torah in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. The voice of Yahweh, the coal, is upon the waters. And the almighty of splendor, he thunders. He thunders. What do we think of when we hear thunder, Yisrael? You can hear that for many, many miles, the thunder. It shakes and it quakes and it moves, Yisrael. Even the very ground under your feet. You would think there's been some thunders that seem like a small trembling of an earthquake. But just the, the sound of the power of the crackling of the lightnings and the Shemayim even shake. The very old land. The voice of Almighty Yahweh. Do we shake when we hear the Torah of Yahweh being exclaimed, Israel? Yah? Do those things that are in us quake? Do we find ourselves looking for shelter, for cover, Israel? Yah? Uh, yeah. The animals do. They find a place of safety. Where is that place of safety, Israel? Yah? Where can we go? There are not many times, Israel, Yah, out of Israel, when the voice of Yahweh would sound. Or where he will appear upon the mount, they fled, hid themselves, hide ourselves. As I, as I explained in the past message, we find ourselves running even from the very Torah of Yahweh. Why? Because it exposes. It exposes what's in us, Israel. 
That's one thing fear we do. Want to cause you to check your left? Have you not been in a situation of fear? We didn't know where to go to the left or the right. One of the first things you begin to do is, what have I done? If I didn't get through this, where would I be? All the things you have done that were not right, it seemed to come upon you in an instant, Israel. Such shall it be when the thunders of Yahweh's voice as it rolls, as it crackles, Israel, even upon the waters. Hallelujah. The waters in Torah is explained as nations, as the Goyim, and even as Yisrael. And that's what I want to expound upon on today, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Turn with me into Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Hallelujah. This is concerning Yahshua walking upon the waters, the fear of Kephah, that instance, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We must understand that this world is in a way. They try to come against us as the rushing of many water. They try to overcome us, Israel. They try to drown you in their cesspools of sin, in their whorehouses, drunkenness, lasciviousness, anything that isn't pleasing unto the flesh. It tries to consume us. It tries to drown us. Take us, Israel, even the very life of Yahshua from our bosom. It says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, and straightway Yahshua, he constrained his discipline ones, his disciples, to get into a ship. This, this situation was after the feeding of the multitudes, Israel. And to go before him, ahead of him, to the other side, while he set the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain apart to pray, to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there all by himself. He was alone, Israel. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. We are the ship, Israel. And we have been set in the midst of the sea. Of this opposition against Almighty Yahweh. Toss with the waves. Do we not feel the tossing of the waves? Of this oppression? Israel. We're only going to be delivered by Shema or hearing the voice of Almighty Yahweh. If Israel did not hear Moshe as Yahweh spoke, do you remember the message when I was talking about how Moshe, the signs of Moshe, and Yahweh said that these signs will speak unto Israel? But there was toss with the waves, Israel. For the wind, that's another element, was contrary. It was against them. They was on their way to a certain place in this ship where Yahshua had commanded them to go. But yet the wind was against them. The waves was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua, he went to them. Don't you know in this time, Israel, we're in this watch this first watch. We should be alert. But yet many of us, we sleep, Israel. We're drowsy to the point we do not even understand what is going on around us. Have you ever been in that state where you're so sleepy that you do not hear the storms coming or the raging or the beating of the wind or the rain, Israel? You're just sound asleep. Sound asleep. Not, nothing awakes you. But on the fourth watch of night, when Yahshua went to them, walking, it says, on the sea. Walking. Yes. Walking. That had to be a sight to behold, Israel. Yeah. How many of you have tried that, walking on the water? Have you ever tried walking on water? Yeah. Haven't tried that one, huh? Hallelujah. Why haven't we tried that? Because it's a feat that's impossible. Who would try walking on the water? Yet Yahshua, he was able to walk upon the water. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even in this instance, the raging, the waves. I remember there was a trip we took years ago to the coast to do some saltwater fishing. And it was not the roughest of days out on the sea, but it was not the smoothest either. We was in a small boat and fishing. 
trying to pull something in out of the water. And it seemed like some of those waves would pick that boat up 10, 12 feet from the water. I, I, I kid you not. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing, but yet at the same time, it's a fearful thing. Because you wonder, boy, if I fall off of this ship, what awaits me in those waters? You could be a champion swimmer, but out in the ocean, it, there's almost no hope for you. Hallelujah. But yet, even in that ship, the only kind of comfort there was that you was in something that you could hold on to, something that could stay afloat, something that could ride the waves. Hallelujah. The dips. Riding on a wave and going down into a dip. It's not a good feeling, especially for those that are weak of the stomach, and we have some of those that get sick. Hallelujah. But yet, Yahshua comes walking on this sea, Israel, y'all. And we, as a people, we're alike this ship yes, on the sea. Without a rudder, no sense of direction of where to go. And there was fear and anguish in the hearts of the disciplined ones of Almighty Yahweh. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, verse 24, and the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Are we troubled? When the emit of Almighty Yahweh, the Torah of Yahweh, is given instruction unto us, Israel, y'all. Don't you know that as our life raft, our salvation, why would they be troubled to see Yahshua walking on the wall? Because they could not understand. Was this a, a I'm going to use the word ghost. What is this? They did not know who he was at the time, Israel. Is it a spirit? They wondered. And they cried out for fear. For fear. They cried out, shouting and crying, screaming. They was afraid, Israel. But straight away, Yahshua, what did he do, Israel? He spoke. He spoke. He spoke to them, saying, Be of tough cheer. Why are you afraid? Come on, Yisrael, y'all, why are we afraid? We're being tossed. We're being shoved ashonder to the left or to the right. It seems like we're going to be consumed, Yisrael, y'all. Yeah. It seems like there's no hope, and there is no hope except for the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. There is no hope except for the speaking of the Dabar of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. We would drown, Yisrael, y'all. We would be taken. We would not even be where we are today if it had not been for Yahshua, HaMashiach, on our side. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, be of tub sheer. Why is your countenance fallen, Yisrael? Do we hope in Yahshua, HaMashiach? Do we rest in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? He said, it is I. It is I, Yisrael. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. It seems like an easy statement to make when things are in turmoil. Don't be afraid, Yisrael. Yahshua. Anytime we need him, all we have to do is cry out, Yisrael. Yeah. Anytime we need Almighty Yahweh, all you have to do is just send up a palah. Pray unto Yahweh earnestly. His ear is not closed that he cannot hear us, Yisrael. Neither is his arm short that he cannot say. Do we know how to cry out, Yisrael? We seem to, as a nation, have lost that. You don't hear the crying or the pleading before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. To ask for deliverance, to ask for direction, Israel. Yet Yahweh he is right there waiting. Yahshua is right there waiting, Israel. All he asks of us is to be of tough cheer. To endure this for a season. Endure the rushing of the wind, the raging of the waves. Because I am in control and I will speak, Israel. Aren't you waiting for the don't you want the voice of Yahweh to speak unto you? Even in your most trying times, Israel. When things are rough, Yisrael, you need someone just to speak to you. Isn't that so? Yes. Has that, there have been times in my life where I just needed someone just to speak to me. Yes. Just, a converse, just a conversation. Yes. Just speak unto me the words, the right words that I need. Yisrael. But it's important even when you're in the state, you must be ready to hear, to listen. Hallelujah. 
that you may hear what Yahweh speaks, Israel. Hallelujah. Many times we have a, a, a hope that wants to strengthen us, wants to encourage us, whether it's by way of rebuke or exaltation. But many times we're not in the mindset to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must allow our ears to be open, Israel. Be one to Laha, to give. Give your attention. Give your heart, your assistance, one to another, Israel. We must do that. Hereby, hereby shall the heathen know that you are my disciplined ones, that you have the Ahava one to another, Israel. Hallelujah. We must be willing to give time, Israel, unto one another, and most of all, unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes, Verse 30, 31. And immediately, Yahshua. Hallelujah. What did I leave off, Israel? I'm sorry. I lost my track. What verse was that? Kephi answered and said. Verse 27. But straightway, Yahshua spoke to them, saying, Be of tough cheer, and as I be not afraid. And Kephi answered to him and said, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, if it be you, they was doubting if this was Yahshua HaMashiach, bid me to come to you on the water. Are we afraid to put forth our step if Yahshua call us to come? To step out onto the water, that we may have the victory over these things, Yisrael. And he said, come. And when Kephi was come down out of the ship, are we willing to come out of the ship, Yisrael? Yes, Are we willing to ride these waves? Yes. We see Yahshua, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We should not have any doubt. We should not have any worries. If our hope is in Yahshua HaMashiach, the Torah of Yahweh. Yes. He walked on the water to go to Yahshua yes. HaMashiach. Yes. Do we do that, Yisrael? Do we get out of the ship, the place where we feel like we have comfort? Do we come out of that, out of the, our modes? Many of us, we have a, a shell we want to close ourselves up into and segregate ourselves from Yisrael. When we should not, Yisrael. There, should not, there shouldn't be any trial or any separation, situation that should keep us from um, communicating with each other. There's nothing that should keep us from praying or sending a pillar unto Almighty Yahweh. We must get out of this ship, Israel. Yeah. We must come unto Almighty Yahweh. No matter what the situation may be, no matter how it seems, how afraid we might be, Israel, we must come out of this ship and approach Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. just as Kepha had done. And when Kepha was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 30. But when he saw that the winds were boisterous, he was afraid, and he, beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Rabbi, Yahshua, Master, save me, save me, and immediately. Don't you know Yahweh, he hearkened unto the voice of Israel. It said immediately, hallelujah. Immediately, Yahshua stretched forth his hand and caught him. Well, what are you saying, Israel? Yahweh is not going to allow Yisrael to go underwater, to be drowned, to be destroyed, Yisrael. Even in the most trying circumstances, he is right there with his arms spread out wide. But we must shema. We must hear and we must obey his voice. If, Kepha, if he did not obey the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach, if he allowed the doubt to settle into his living, he would have perished. He would have drowned. If you did not listen to the voice of Yahshua, we will perish in this generation, Israel. We must hearken unto the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We must open our minds. We must open our lair, our ears, to hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And he said to him, even through all this, O oh, you of little faith, little imuna. That is a picture of us, Israel. whether you want to grasp it or not. This is Yisrael today. Oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Why did we doubt, Yisrael? Why can we not get up out of this ship, out of this nutshell? 
out of this Ruach that is not of Yahweh and tread upon the waters. Yahshua, he did not have any problem. He was not afraid. And we have opportune every day, Yisrael, to walk upon the waters, to depend on Almighty Yahweh for all things. Breath, every breath we take, we should depend on Almighty Yahweh. I know many times we don't think about it. You don't think about it that Yahweh, he's allowing you to have breath, to come into his bayat even tonight, Yisrael. Many times we, don't, we do not think of Almighty Yahweh providing to us today bread to eat, clothes on our back. Hallelujah. He will provide all that we need, Yisrael. Why do we have, why are we a little imuna? Why do we not believe in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Verse 32. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. When Yahshua came into the ship, brought Kepha, everything was quieted. The waves calmed themselves. They obeyed, they obeyed the moving of Yahshua HaMashiach. Even the waters in the elements, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given us the same power. Yes. Hallelujah. How Zakain, through his Torah, through his Mishvah. Yes. Hallelujah. He has given us that power, Yisrael. Yes. Verse 33. Yes. And when they were in the ship, came, they came and worshipped him, Yahshua, saying, of a truth that you are the son of Almighty Yahweh. They knew that he was the son of Almighty Yahweh. Even though they doubted his presence at the time, walking upon the water, only the, the bar of Yahweh, the Torah of Yahweh, could do this. Only the Torah of Yahweh can deliver us, Yah, Yisrael. Yah. We tried every means under the sun, and it has not worked for us. We tried every route, instead of staying in the path, the straight and narrow path of Yahshua, and it has not strengthened us to continue walking in the Torah, Yisrael. Yeah. It's time that we forget all the folly and all the foolishness, Yisrael. Yeah. That we trust only what is written. Yes. Not only what is written in this book, but what Yahweh has placed in our lives, Yisrael. Yeah. He said that I have done a new thing. To the house of Yisrael. Yes. I will write the Torah in their lips. Yes. That they will not have to go far to receive or to achieve the Torah. But it will be placed in our lips, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Many times we just need a perk, a, perk, yes. a prick, that we may continue in this way, Yisrael, yes. of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. How, how important is the water, Yisrael? Yes. Torah mentioned it many times. The water, the waves. We're not the first world, as many say, destroyed by water. Yes, yes. But yet, Noah and those that was with him, were they not in the ship? Sure. Yeah. It's almost the same parallel, Yisrael. They were in the ship, this ark of safety. Yet, all those that did not believe the message that Noah, he proclaimed, he preached many years. He did not preach it just in a few days, a few weeks. His life, and his, his, his life was an example unto those that was around him. Yes, Yah. That Yahweh deemed him Sadiq, righteous, peculiar in that generation. And yet the waters and the rains came upon the old limb, excuse me, without restraint. The floods, the waters exceeded even above the mountain tops. That not anyone, except those that was in the pavilion in the ship, was able to survive. Noah spoke many years concerning of the rain, or this type of trial, or this type of tribulation, and no one heard his voice. No one understood what Yahweh was speaking unto his left. But only those that was in the ark, Yisrael, they were saved. So the waters was a deliverance for Noah, but it was damnation unto those that did not walk in that truth, that the rains are coming, that the rains are coming. Are we hearing the voice of those that Yahweh has set to speak unto the house of Israel? Don't you know there's a trial coming, Israel, that is bigger 
or stronger than anything we can muster up of our flesh, Israel. Yes, yes. It's only going to be by the Torah of Yahweh that we will be saved, Israel. Only by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Only by his Torah. And another thing about water, Israel, that is so important. Don't you know the body is made up and it depends um, really upon the person. Yes, yes. But right around 60 to 70 percent of even the body, the flesh, is water, Israel. Yes. There's almost 70 to 80 yes. percent. And it depends on how you look at the statistics of water upon the Olam. Yes. And that doesn't include the water that is in the air in the Shemayim's Israel. It doesn't include the rivers, the lakes, the ponds. It's basically the seas. Many waters. Even in the Psalms of Solomon, it talks about many waters cannot quench Ahava. Yes. It cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. So even in that, we should be able to take and understand the power of water. Yes. The power of water. Even the power of nations. The power of Yisrael. Mm -hmm. How is it going to be controlled, Yisrael? But you know, Yahweh, his Torah is controlling even this election that is happening in the United States of America. His Debar is in control, Yisrael. He's in control of all things. His word governs all things. This government that has been established has been established by Almighty Yahweh. And he's going to be the one to take it down, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue. I want to speak concerning a situation. And, uh, e e not, ha not, you're not going to have this in the Torah unless you have uh, the lost uh, books, Israel. But e not, e not, 89, chapter 89, verse 13. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. Yeah. Concerning Israel as being the sheep of Almighty Yahweh. If we would think back a few weeks ago when I talked, did not we talk about the sheep and how the sheep hear the voice of the master or the shepherd and a stranger they would not follow? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, this is an example. I'm going to uh, somewhat speedily go through this before I move on. Hallelujah. Israel. So just bear with me. Hallelujah. The power of Almighty Yahweh, the voice of Yahweh, it even moves upon the waters, Israel. It says in chapter 89 of Enoch, verse 13, and this is somewhat um, a prophecy of how Enoch saw the condition of Yisrael being delivered from Yisrael. So in this, he keeps alluding to Yisrael as the sheep. Hallelujah. For we are the sheep of Yahweh's pasture. We cannot just eat out of any pasture. But we should eat out of the place that Yahweh wants to eat, his pasture, Yisrael. It said, when those 12 sheep have gone up, they gave away one of their own members to the donkey. Now, I'm going to explain this as we go, Yisrael, because he, he's using animals as a figurative speech. Which in the turn gave away unto the wolves. Now, the wolves is Mizraim. That's what the wolves are. You know, the wolves try to sneak in, try to take out, pick out the weak sheep. And we can look at that as Mizraim picking out those things in our lives, Yisrael. The wolves, they come to gnaw. They come to destroy. Even the small things, Yisrael, that Yahweh has given unto us. It says, so this sheep grew upon the midst of the wolves. This one sheep was Moshe. As he was in the house of Pharaoh at that time. Amongst the wolves. Yahweh allowed him to dwell amongst the wolves. And when the master brought the 11 sheep, and it talks about even before this concerning the 12 sheep. This is the 12 sheep, the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Even the 12 sheep to dwell with him in a pasture in the midst of the wolves. We are in the midst of wolves, Yisrael. Yeah. Even Yisrael and Mizraim, there was in a place that was blessed of Almighty Yahweh, Gosha. And yet they dwell in a tough place, but yet in the midst of wolves, Israel. And there Yahweh provided everything that they needed right there. 
And they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep. And when the wolves began to fear them, they're not, if you recall, they're not the Egyptians began to fear the multitude of Israel as they began to multiply in number. That's one of the reasons that they, the, um, the torture and the beatings became more and more pronounced, Israel. So they tortured them until the little ones were even being killed, for they were cast away, the little ones, into the river of great quantities of water. Even in their desperation, was not Moshe found in a basket floating down a river, Israel, a river of water? So those sheep began to cry aloud. Israel cried aloud on behalf of their little ones and complained unto their master. And this is talking about the one sheep, Moshe. The one sheep had been saved from the wolves, fled and escaped into the wilderness, into the wild asses. But I saw the sheep continue to lament and to cry aloud. This is Israel. And they kept praying unto their master with all their strength unto the master of the sheep. He descended. At their treatment, did not Yahweh come down and he saw the treatment of Israel, how they was being beaten and, and, and forced by the Egyptians. And he come down from his high place, his lofty place, arriving to visit them. And he called that sheep that had escaped from the woods, the, the wolves, and told him, according to the wolves, that he should warn the wolves not to touch the sheep. And this is concerning Moshe again, being that one sheep amongst the wolves, amongst Mizraim. Did not Moshe come to tell Mizraim to let, Yah let Yahweh's people go? Yeah. Let the flock, let the sheep go, Yisrael. That the sheep went to the wolves in accordance with the word of the master, all together with other sheep that he had met. So the two of them went on arrival and arrived together to the assembly of the wolves and spoke them to warn or to the warning of them not to touch the sheep. So what was one of the main deliverances of Israel? If we would account this account of them come out of Mizraim, I will get to that. Do you remember what their deliverance, where it was at? Hallelujah. Well, let us read on. I will explain that to us, Israel. Hallelujah. Yahweh, this would, I'll give you a hint. Yahweh used the water. He used the water to separate Yisrael from Mizraim. Hallelujah. Does that, does that, if I would say, ring a bell, Yisrael? Well, let us move on. A few more scriptures. Uh, verse 19. But thenceforth I saw the wolves even intensified their pressure upon the sheep. They, the sheep, cried aloud. And they cried aloud with all of their strength. Then their master came to rescue of the sheep. Thereupon, they began to whip those wolves or defeat the wolves. But what was that whipping? It was the judgment of Almighty Yahweh upon Mizraim. So the wolves, they began to make lamentation. But the sheep, therefore, became quiet. And they stopped crying aloud at seeing the deliverance of Almighty Yahweh, the judgment of Mizraim, even the diseases that come upon them. Their firstborn born, being slaughtered or died amongst the midst of them. And it was not just babies, Yisrael. It was the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. It was old folks, middle aged, whoever was the firstborn in Mizraim, they were destroyed. Verse 21. And I counted to see the sheep, and I continued to see the sheep until they departed from the presence of the wolves, and the wolves until their eyes were dazzled. Yet the wolves went out to pursue the sheep. The wolves again being Mizraim. Did not the soldiers go after Mizraim? Don't you know Satan is coming after us, Israel? He's coming with all he has. The scriptures. They describe him as being a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, not a lion now, seeking whom he may devour. So the wolves, they went out to pursue those sheep with all their might, their great and mighty armies. Did they not pursue Mizraim? Did I not talk about the waters or the waves? Hallelujah. That is a type of this nation, this nation that is against Almighty Yahweh, is also against Mizraim, I mean against Yisrael. So what does Yahweh do? We'll get to that. 
But the master of the sheep went unto them as the leader. While as the sheep were following them, his face was splendid. There was not any trouble upon the face of Moshe, no doubt upon the face of Moshe. He knew that Yahweh would deliver them. His face was splendid. It was, it says, adorable and marvelous to behold. As for the wolves, they continued to pursue those sheep until they found them at a certain pool of water. Hallelujah. And we understand that that water, it divided um, Yisrael from deliverance that Yahweh had placed before them. They had to get across the river, Yisrael. They could not cross those waters because the waters were deep and it was boisterous. Then the pool of water was rent asunder. How was it rent asunder? Was it by the power or the means of the flesh of Moshe? Or was it by him obeying the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, as he spoke, as he used the staff? As being the things that keep us in line by the Torah of Yahweh. Sometimes it takes a staff. Does it take a rod to keep the children? Our pain yes. to keep them in line. Yes. So that keep it, 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 we need to keep us in line, Israel. Yes. It takes yes. a step. Yes. And that step shall deliver us, Israel. Yes. Yes. Even as the enemy our own, our heels, Israel. Yes. The waters was rent asunder, and the water that it says stood apart. And this and on every side before their very eyes. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me Yahweh is not able to deliver Israel. Yes. Don't tell me Yahweh is not able to point us in the right direction. Yes. Don't tell me Yahweh is not able to deliver us even from Mizraim. For this, the raging waters of the sea, yes. he is able. No it only takes his voice, Israel. Yes. The power of his voice, his misfire, his co. All that he is, Israel. That we may escape even this very generation that we are in. We are still yet sheep. And yet the world is still pursuing us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 26, verse 25, those wolves, they were still not able to see the sheep. And the sheep walked that pool of water. And the wolves followed the sheep and ran after them into the pool of water or where it was divided, Israel. Israel walked upon dry shod to escape their enemies. They were not slowed down by the mud. They were not slowed down by the waters that was parted on either side. Yahweh had made a way for them, Israel. And Yahweh, he has made a way for us through Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahweh has spoke. He has sent his Torah and Yahshua the Lamb. Hallelujah. And in him we find our deliverance. It said, but that pool of water gathered itself together and immediately returned to its normal state. And the water became full and rose high until it completely covered those wolves. It completely covered the Egyptians, those that pursued Israel. So the waters of Almighty Yahweh can be both uh, con condemnation to those that do not abide by the Torah yes. and those who obey, that hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh, it is their deliverance. The Torah of Yahweh is our deliverance, Israel. Hallelujah. So allow the voice of Yahweh to speak unto us, Israel. He will take care of our enemies. He will take care of the world, Israel. Even though they may come after us with every invention, by demonic force, by every wind of darkness, by every wave, yet we shall not be consumed. Why? Because the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, the voice of Almighty Yahweh, shall keep us, Israel. And he shall speak. The thunderings of his voice shall rumble aloud for Israel. Don't you know he desires us, Israel? Yahweh wants to preserve his people. He wants to keep us. So what does he do? He speaks unto us by his mishpah, by his servants, by the malach, whether it be 
by the service that stands before us, hallelujah, or the Melikim of the Shemayim Yisrael, hallelujah. Turn with me to Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 5, I want to begin reading. Why are we so captive in this time, Yisrael? Why are we held almost a uh, hostage by the world? Israel. Why is that? Even though Yahweh has provided deliverance through Yahshua HaMashiach, yet as Kephah did, we find ourselves doubting. Why do we doubt? Hallelujah. Why is this? Daniel chapter 9 verse 5. He says and exclaims here, for we have sinned. We have transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and have committed iniquities. When you find yourself transgressing the Torah of Yahweh to the point why that you're committing iniquities, you're not hearing the voice of Yahweh. Don't say I hear the voice of Yahweh, I'm following the Torah, and yet you're committing sin and iniquity. You're a liar. You're a liar. And have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your commandments, Almighty Yahweh, and from your judgments. Verse 6. Neither have we hearkened. What is hearkening? What must we do? Have I not been talking about hearkening in this message? Or in the past messages? Don't the sheep hearken to the voice of the shepherd and another voice that will not follow? Neither have we hearkened to your servants. The shepherds, the pastors, the Malah, your servants, the prophets, the Nevi'im, which spoke in your name. Why would we not listen to those that speak by the unction, by the name of Almighty Yahweh? Our kings, our princes, and our fathers are of us, and to all the people of the land. O sovereign Yahweh, Righteousness belongs unto you, but to us confusion of faces. Don't you know we are a confused nation, Israel? If you're approaching, if I may use this example, um, a checkpoint, and there are policemen around, there's a row of cars, you don't really understand, you see the lights, you don't know what's going on. If you're incoherent, when you pull up, when it's your turn to be inspected, and the officer speaks to you, and you're incoherent or you don't hear, you're not going to understand what he's saying. Sir, let me see your license, please, your registration. Uh, what was that? Your license and registration, please. You're dull of hearing. You're not going to be able to obey the instruction of the officer. So as it is with Yisrael. If we do not open our ears to hear the instructions of Yah Almighty Yahweh, we're not going to understand even what his messengers are saying, Israel, because of our sin and our iniquities. Righteousness belong to you, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day. To the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, even to all Israel that are near and that are far off, though all the countries where you have driven them because of their trespasses. It's because of our trespasses. That they have trespassed against you, Yahweh. O sovereign Yahweh, to us belongs confusion of face. To our kings, to our princes, and to our avats, because we have sinned against you. We're receiving our just recompense and reward, Israel, Almighty Yahweh. We've been split asunder. We have been separated. If we are soldiers or warriors in the army, the pursuit of Almighty Yahweh, we have to be able to hear instruction, Israel. We can't be drunken by the cares of the world or by this life. We can't be incoherent, Israel, because when the sound of the trumpet goes forth, we will not be able to hear. When the instruction goes forth or the warning of Almighty Yahweh, to flee, we will not be able to hear Yisrael. Verse 9. To the sovereign Yahweh our Abba 
belongs mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against Yahweh, neither have we obeyed the voice of Almighty Yahweh, our Abba. You know, that has to be some searing of the ears or some searing of the mind as the voice of Yahweh thunders unto us, Yisrael, through Yahshua, through his Torah, and we cannot hear. We cannot perceive what Yahweh is speaking unto us. Do not the Torah says that his voice thunders? It quakes. It is heard. It commands authority. It commands fear. That even the waters obey him. Even the winds obey his voice, Yisrael, Yah. But yet we fall short of even that. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Neither have we obeyed the voice, the call of Yahweh, our Abba. To what? To walk. We have to hear the voice of Yahweh to walk? Yes. The instructions to walk. In his Torah, in his Mishpah, which he has set before us by his servants, the prophets. We need the prophets in this hour, Yisrael. If we cannot hear the Melah, the Melach, those that stand before us, that proclaim the Mishpah of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and we don't take the time to listen to one another. Take the time, Israel, to help your out or your aho. Then we're not going to be able to hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh. We're not going to be in the place or the position to hear, to shema the voice of our Abba. Even the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And if we cannot do that, when his prophets, when he sent the prophet, the Nabi, we're not going to hear him either, Yisrael. So what do we do, Zakain? Well, we must work on the small things. The small things. And if we are found faithful in the small things, then when that time comes that the prophet speaks, then we shall hear Yisrael. For it's the small things that destroy us. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine, Yisrael. So we must be able to hear even the quiet and still voice of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 11. Yes, all Yisrael has transgressed your Torah, even by departing, that they might not obey your call, your voice. The voice of Almighty Yahweh. You just think about this, Yisrael. Do we obey the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Ask yourself that question. When we hear the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, do we shut our ears? Or do we do all that's within us, all the strength that's within us, Yisrael? Seek to walk in the Mishpah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Therefore, the curse is poured out upon us, and the oath that is written in the Torah of Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, because we have sinned against Almighty Yahweh. And he has confirmed in his words, his Mishpah, his speech, his Dabar, which he has spoken against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing up us a great evil. And under the whole Shemayim has not been as has been upon Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Why are we in such bondage, Yisrael? Why can't we step out as Yahshua HaMashiach called upon Kepha to step out and walk upon the waters, Yisrael? It's because we must adhere. We must hear the voice, the call of Almighty Yahweh. Even as we speak, it's more than just words, Yisrael. But when Yahweh speaks, there's action. Things happen. Life, even in death, there's life. Everything obeys the voice of Almighty Yahweh. So must we as being the children of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. As I bring this message tonight to a close, Yisrael, and I will continue on this. We have spoke concerning the waters, Yahweh speaking unto the waters. And when we appear or I come before you next, Yisrael, we will go to the next verse concerning, concerning the thunders of Almighty Yahweh, the power in his voice. Hallelujah. 
What does it do, Yisrael? Does it cause us to turn? Does it cause us to birth the life that, of the Torah that Yahweh has placed within us? Hallelujah. That's what it should do, Yisrael. Every time you hear the Torah, it should produce life in us. We should come alive. We should not allow the flesh to put us in a place where we die spiritually, Yisrael. But we cannot hear the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I have a few verses in Tehillim I do want to read as I bring this message to a close. It says in Tehillim Psalms chapter 93 verse 1. David exclaims that Yahweh, he reigns. He is above all. Did not we talk about the moving of the rock of Yahweh upon the waters? That even the waters, the elements obey Yahweh's every command. Yahweh, he reigns, and he is clothed with majesty, with power, with dominion. Yahweh is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girdled himself. It says that the world also is established. Has not the world been established, Israel? By the speaking of Yahweh's Torah. The world, the ground that we walk on, everything is held together. If it wasn't for the Torah of Yahweh, it would all fall apart, Yisrael. That it cannot be moved. Don't you know the world will not be moved? You have those that talk about meteors and things destroying the world and breaking it asunder. If the world's going to be destroyed, it's going to be by his voice. Not what the scientists predict, not what the astrologers say. It's going to be by his voice. Because by his voice is everything established. Don't let what these scientists and men say fool you. There's going to be a meteorite in the next thousands and thousands of years going to destroy the earth. No, it's not. That's not going to happen because it's established by Yahweh and it said it cannot be moved. He says your throne is established of old. You are from everlasting to everlasting. And it says that even the floods, did I not talk about the floods, the rushing of the waters, the floods as being um, the going of the nations coming against Israel. Did not the Egyptians, Mizraim, come against Israel? The world tried to come against us by every form and every fashion, every way that it can. Satan is pulling every trick he can to detour us from the Torah, the path of Almighty Yahweh, to clog our ears from his, his voice. The floods had lifted up, O Yahweh. The floods had lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. But he says this, but Yahweh on high, he is mightier than the noise of many waters. Have you ever listened to the sea? It's something, you know, when we take the trips to the, to the coast just to listen to the rushing of the waters. It seems like it, it just surrounds everything. The rushing of the waters, the might of the waters. Yahweh is even mightier than that, Yisrael. His voice. Yes, then the mighty waves of the sea. And he says that your testimonies are very sure. The foundation, his testimonies are sure, Yisrael. We can rest assured on the foundations of Almighty Yahweh. Even upon the waters, the foundations of Yahweh are sure. Was not when Yahshua, when he walked upon the, upon the water, was not his feet sure? They did not slip. He did not sink, did he? No, he stayed upon the waters. Your testimonies are very sure. Stand upon the testimony of Yahshua, Yisrael. Pure, set apart is your house, is the bite of Almighty Yahweh. O Yahweh, forever and forever. Hallelujah. Oh, Yahweh Barak, you all, house of Israel. I pray this message has been an inspiration to our nephews. And if you didn't glean anything at all, the time I have spent at this Yisrael, the Torah of Yahweh being spoken, realize that Yahweh, he is above all. Hallelujah. And his voice commands all Yisrael. Even your trials and your situation, you are listening by via of live stream. Yahweh is in control of that. Don't be of Lula Imuna. Stand sure on the foundation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because it is the Torah, it's the voice of Almighty Yahweh that keeps you, that rises you up in the morning. And that same voice, his call, his essence, it lays you down at night. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Yahweh brought you all, Yisrael. 
I do tonight pray that all of you that listen by via of live stream here at Test Your Community, that Yahweh will give you a beautiful sleep, for he gave his beloved rest. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you. We told you for all things. Even for the sure foundation, Yahshua HaMashiach, that even through the winds and the waves, as the song come to mind, Yisrael, Yah, we shall not be moved, Yah, but we shall stand upon what you have spoken and what you speak unto us, Yahweh, by your call, your voice. For all things have been established, even Yisrael, Yah. So we do barak you for all things. Those that are listening by via of live stream, you barak them, Abba Yahweh. And those that have traveled near and far, Abba Yahweh, take them, Yahweh, to the appointed place at the appointed time. And all things we do barak you in the precious, mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do cry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh barak you, Israel. Hallelujah.